So let's move on to our next panelist. And this is Dr. Laibuta, Dr. Kibaya Laibuta, who is going to focus on policy and legislative responses. Um, Dr. Laibuta is an attorney at law and the managing partner in the firm Laibuta Associates, which is based in Nairobi. It's a firm um, that uh, drafts, uh, it's a firm of legislative drafting consultants and law attorneys, mediators, and arbitrators. And the principal place of business is Nairobi, Kenya, which I already mentioned. He is a renowned author, legislative counsel, chartered arbitrator, and a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, UK, with a wealth of experience in constitutional law, human rights, family law, and children's rights which is why we've asked him on the panel today. Dr. Laibuta is the founding dean and senior law lecturer at, at the University of Embu Law School in Kenya. He served as a commissioner in the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution in Kenya, the one that Veronica referred to, the Constitution 2010, and is a member of the National Council on the Administration of Justice. He also served as technical advisor to the Rules Committee of the Judiciary on legislative drafting. Dr. Laibuta drafted the Children's Bill 2020 and the requisite rules and regulations for the operationalization of the statute law on children's matters in Kenya. He studied at the University of Nairobi, Kenya School of Law, the London School of Economics and Political Science, University of London, at and at the International Law Institute in Kampala. So welcome, Dr. Laibuta. Uh, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sheila. Uh, I believe you will all agree that children and human rights is a fairly fascinating subject, not just for discussion, but things of concern to the community of nations today. And there's reason to say this, because the community of nations, global community recognizes that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and in rights. That is why, again, the golden thread that runs through legislative frameworks globally, the golden thread is this for every child, every right. How though do we ensure that every child enjoys these rights and freedoms that are enshrined in various treaty instruments at the UN level, at the regional level? A further step must be taken, but let's say a little about the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which provides the needed platform for the promotion and protection of the rights of the child. Ratified in 1990, this is perhaps the most widely ratified uh, convention. Now the convention lives up to the popular slogan that I've already mentioned, for every child, every right. What does this convention do? It gives effect to the fundamental rights, the fundamental human rights, um, that, that are already enshrined in various um, uh, instruments, which I'll mention again very briefly. It gives effect to the foundation of UN human rights instruments. And we are all familiar with the UN declaration, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the UN Convention on uh, Civil and Political Rights, the, 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 the UN, the, the Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. I take them a step further by paying special attention to children. Now, the Convention on the Rights of the Child constitutes the International Agreement on Childhood. And there is reason for focusing on childhood because it does recognize that childhood 
as it does recognize childhood as a special stage in life that requires special care and protection, requires special assistance. It recognizes the, that the family is indeed the fundamental group in society for the growth and development of every individual, but especially children who again have special needs that close attention should be paid to. And that is why children need to grow in a family environment. And you find that the law in Kenya does focus on that specifically. Those principles, Golden Thread that I've spoken of, informs Kenya's policy and legislative framework, the administrative frameworks, the institutional uh, frameworks that are, that, are, that are quite comprehensive uh, in making sure that children rights uh, are coded effective protection and promotion. Now, the legislative, institutional, and administrative frameworks, of course, uh, in Kenya, uphold the rights of the child that are spelled in the Kenya constitution. When you look at the 2010 constitution promulgated way back in, uh, in August, 27th August, uh, August 2010, um, you find that the fourth chapter, chapter four, provides a robust bill of rights that applies to just about everybody. However, Article 53 in that chapter pays special attention to children. Article 54 addresses itself to persons with disabilities, including children, of course. And with this regard, then you find we have the Persons with Disabilities Act that has uh, quite some expansive provisions uh, on, on, on children, their rights, their well being, the children programs to ensure that as children with disabilities, uh, they enjoy special uh, attention. Of course, that bill is under review presently. It has just recently been accorded the cabinet approval. And when it comes law again, you'll have enhanced legislative framework uh, on that front. Article 55 deals with the youth. Again, fairly important because the youth, um, how we define it, I'm not attempt to define it here, but includes um, uh, ages of children, you know, from 16 upward. And then you have Article 56 uh, that deals with minority and marginalized groups. Among them, children who have special needs depending on the kind of communities they come from. If those communities are marginalized or, or, or constitute minority groups, again, children um, uh, need a special attention. Uh, their circumstances of those groups impact on children much more than they do on those uh, who can uh, survive on their own. Now, coming to the children bill, 2020, we started working on this piece of legislation way back in 2017, again, to give effect to the constitution and to the uh, dictates of the constitution as regards uh, the rights, the basic uh, human rights and freedoms uh, that, that are, 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 are available uh, to everyone, but more especially uh, to children and, and therefore the need to, to, to ensure that this uh, this is done in a more effective way. Of course, taking forward the provisions of the 2001 Act, which is uh, still in force, but revamping the legislative framework on the rights of the child. Now, the bill, of course, is designed to give effect not just to the Constitution, but also to the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And when you look uh, at its provisions, uh, you, you will recognize one thing, that every right that is guaranteed under the Convention uh, is, 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 is given effect by providing the duty bearers, the house, and the effect of breach or violation of those, of those rights. The other thing you will note that the convention is part of the law of Kenya by virtue of 
uh, Article 2, uh, Sabbatical 5 and 6, Sabbaticals 5 and 6 of the Constitution, which imports into the domestic law every treaty instrument that Kenya is part of. So the Convention of the Rights of the Child is as good as, as the statute law in Kenya. And therefore, the bill, uh, the 2020 bill, uh, seeks to give effect to that as well in a more comprehensive way. Uh, the Children's Bill uh, is supported by subsidiary legislation. Now, the subsidiary legislation uh, contains rules and regulations that tell us how, when, who should be doing what to give effect not just to the convention, but to the constitution that imports the convention into the law of, of the, the bill. It's the procedures that tell us how to go about uh, the court and administrative uh, function, the, 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 the undertaking of administrative functions by the executive on matters of adoption, matters of foster care, matters of guardianship, you know, the, the appointment of guardians, care and protection of children in need of care and protection. It deals with children uh, in you know, children's institutions, setting standards and ensuring that the registration and management is uh, for the best interest of the child. Then, of course, children in conflict with the law. What you find in both the bill and the procedural regime of the subsidiary legislation is a very well defined uh, framework of rules and regulations that tells us how to deal with child offenders through diversion, uh, how we deal with children who have to be uh, rehabilitated by reason of the fact that they committed certain, uh, they, they, you know, they offended in, in certain ways, so that we remove our children from the criminal justice uh, regime uh, and place it, or uh, place them uh, in, 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 in a process of diversion that is both restorative and, 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 um, and rehabilitative. So that we don't treat our children as criminals, but that although they are offenders, uh, we, we, we need to, to treat them in such ways as we will reform them and serve their best interests as they grow and develop. Part two of this bill um, basically deals with the basic uh, human rights and freedoms uh, that are recited in the Constitution. And these provisions are not merely declaratory. They go further to show who the duty bearers are and what they should do to achieve these rights and what should happen if these rights are violated. Now, you know, very, very quickly, these include the right uh, to, to the highest attainable uh, standard of health, the right to education, uh, the right to social uh, security, uh, the right to leisure and, and uh, yeah, le leisure and recreation, uh, which of course is, is, is the one thing children need all over. <laughs> the, the right, of course, to protection from child labor, the right to protection uh, from sexual abuse and other forms of, of abuse, uh, cyber crime and so forth. Uh, the right to uh, liberty and freedom of movement, the right to, to life, uh, the, the right to, uh, to legal representation uh, in, 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 in proceedings. Now, when we talk about the right to legal representation, you recognize one thing, that the Legal Aid Act is quite exen extensive on who should enjoy legal representation, legal services at the state expense. Children feature. And I was privileged to draft the uh, legal aid regulations. And, and at the same time, I was drafting the children bill. So I made sure that children get the maximum attention when it comes to legal aid. Now, the objectives, of course, of the legislation, the administrative and uh, institutional uh, frameworks is, is, is really very straightforward. First of all, promote the best interest of the child. And you find this as the basic principle that cuts across both substantive legislation and the subsidiary legislation uh, comprised of the rules and regulations. The other objective, of course, is to achieve the universal standards of care and protection of children. Again, 
mirroring on the convention on the rights of the child and also borrowing on the best practices globally, seeing how others in other comparable jurisdictions, whether common or otherwise, uh, see, see to it that these high standards uh, are achieved. Again, to enforce the principle of accountability, social accountability, and we are all accountable to the duty, you know, for the duty to, to, to give care and protection to our children. The things we do in the various child welfare programs, in education, in health, in parent, exercising our parental responsibility matters of adoption, uh, foster care, uh, the children institutions, all of us have a social responsibility to be accountable. Again, the legislative framework, the frameworks are, are, are well designed to uh, support uh, human rights approach, uh, approach to programming, uh, because we do appreciate that uh, all these cannot be attained unless effective programs, plan and actions are in place uh, to ensure that uh, children uh, indeed enjoy uh, the rights and freedoms that the global community ascribes to them. Also to promote family-based care. This is another theme that runs across the substantive and, and subsidiary legislation. Also to guarantee child welfare programs that are effective for the growth and development of our children. Also to guarantee the child's right to survival and development again, uh, which is very closely tied up to the right uh, to life, the inherent li right to life. Uh, also to promote uh, uh, or rather to ensure the protection of children in need of care and protection. One thing you find in the bill is that it has a big list of who are considered to be children in, uh, in need of care and protection. I'll mention only two jurisdictions that we looked at. Of course, we looked at uh, various states in the United States of America that have very good programs for child care and protection. Canada as well, uh, the, the UK, but New Zealand really stood out. It's, it's one of the jurisdictions that has um, a, a set of legislation, a very robust legislative framework for the care and protection of children. And we think all this out because the one thing we realize is that the, you know, the rights of the child are secured uh, by quite a number, you know, multiple uh, uh, sets of legislation, including the Child Commissioner Act of 2003. You have the, um, oh dear, uh, which one is this? The Children, um, Children and Young, Children, Young Persons and Their uh, Families Act. Uh, you, you, you have other pieces of legislation that pay keen attention to children. The Care of Children Act, you know, the Education Act again. Uh, of course, that goes without saying. The, um, which one is it? Yeah, the New Zealand's Bail of Rights. Uh, again, focusing, special, uh, focusing on children uh, in its provisions of the Human Rights Act as well. Uh, quite a number, I must say, uh, including the Official uh, Information Act. Mm -hmm. 1992. When you look at African countries, South Africa also stands out, but in South Africa, uh, we have a, a, a constitution that's quite comprehensive on matters of human rights uh, and setting up, of course, the, the, human, uh, the human rights uh, uh, commission that pays special attention to matters relating to, uh, to children. Uh, that is not to say that other jurisdictions don't pay attention to children, but they do so uh, with varying um, uh, formats in their legislative, administrative, and uh, institutional frameworks. Um, that's all I could say in 10 minutes. I'm sure I have ever short my time. But... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Laibuta. Yes, there's a lot to talk about. Absolutely. Um, but I'm sure we will be able to thrash out some of the issues that 
you have not been able to cover now right. in the Q&A section. Uh, I'm, uh, our audience uh, must be having very many questions. I just want to ask you one very quick question right. because um, you have um, Veronica talked about the intersex children. The, the children's bill, does it recognize intersex children? Because we know in the Kenyan constitution, it was a little bit controversial, the whole issue of sex and gender, if you remember. So yes, yes. what happens it, to intersex children in the children's bill? Yeah, we were ahead on, on, on that, even before the final report. And, and I remember when I was at the middle of the drafting, I met one of the intersex uh, young men, and, 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 and we had a chat at a, at a conference. It is, uh, stood a, a aside and had a lengthy uh, chat. What Veronica has presented is precisely what goes on uh, with our brothers and sisters who are intersex. The bill does accommodate them as children in need of care and protection. Uh, and, and by the way, when you look at the, the, the persons deprived of liberty, and, and, and I was also privileged to lead the technical team that reviewed the initial piece of legislation, beefed it up when I served at the commission. And we, we took good care of, of all these special interest uh, groups. Uh, all along, we've been open even when the national policy did not lend recognition to some of these special interest groups. But we knew that once we put it into law, it will carry the day. And that we, whether we have, uh, a defined national policy or a specific piece of legislation that